Matthew 6.33, people love to talk about this verse. I promise you, if you watch this video through, it is only going to take me like four or five minutes to explain this. I promise you, you're going to come away with a new revelation of what it means to seek the kingdom of God and walk in your life as a Christian, especially a young masculine man who's on Christ Focus Self Improvement, I promise. The difference between heaven and hell is about 14 inches from your heart to your head or from your head to your heart. Or let me put it this way. Your heart cannot be in anything that your mind is not focused on. This is why in Proverbs 21, it says, so a man thinketh, so is he. This is almost going to sound like a conspiracy theory, but I think it's probably really true. And I think it's one of the reasons that a lot of young masculine men that are Christ focused, we're on Christ focused self improvement, we're following God or people just in general. We're so overstimulated now that we have trouble following God because of it. We have trouble hearing God because of it. I think one of the reasons people back in biblical times heard from God so much is because they weren't overstimulated. They didn't have Instagram and TikTok to scroll endlessly. They didn't have millions of YouTube videos they could go watch, listen to endless amounts of songs, watch endless amounts of things on TV. They could pull up pornography on their phone anytime they wanted to. And so of course we're so overstimulated because we've sabotaged our own mind with everything the world has to offer, which is why it feels like you get so many intrusive thoughts when you when you go to pray. It's so hard to sit down and pray because your mind is just so overwhelmed with everything that we've been feeding it. And so one of the best things that I think we can do just as Christians in general, but especially as a young masculine man, you're Christ focused, you're on self-improvement, all this stuff is something called a spiritual detox, right? You've probably heard of dopamine detoxes and all that type of stuff. And it's very similar. It's just a correction because with that verse in Proverbs 23, seven, so a man think is so is he. Everything that you're likely struggling with now, at least part of it is a game of inputs, right? And what do I mean by that? If you're still struggling with cussing or something like that, I can almost guarantee you it's because the music that you listen to, they still cuss in. The movies or TV shows you watch, they still cuss in. The people you hang around, they still cuss. And so because you're hearing that, right, faith comes by hearing. That is in what is in your heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's the same thing with lust. If you're watching a bunch of lustful TV shows or even listening to music that is constantly talking about that stuff, it is going to rub off on you right? And so what a spiritual detox actually is, is kind of like a dopamine detox. We're going to push out the social media scrolling. We're going to push out the music. We're going to push out all this different type of stuff. But instead of just not doing anything, kind of just being bored for three days and maybe reading a book and waiting for it to take your dopamine levels back to a normal level, everything is just going to get replaced with something spiritual. So rather than when you sit and watch your YouTube video, when you eat lunch during the day, now you're actually going to go and just find a sermon. You're going to pull up Philip Anthony Mitchell or some pastor. You're going to pull up Keith Moore while you listen to something and that's what you're going to listen to while you eat you're going to when you're lifting it's worship music it's sermons it's something like that right it is no more future no more little uzi none of that none of that garbage it's so stupidly simple that it just makes so much sense that i feel like we just overlook it or at least I, i'm not going to speak for you i overlooked it for so long if you simply just change the inputs of your life you will get new outputs and the new outputs that we're looking for as Christians is fruits, right? Fruits of the spirit, peace, joy, happiness. We're looking to grow our business. We're looking to step into something new. We're looking to cast out demons and speak in new tongues, right? That's Mark, what, one, three, seven, something like that. The reason I'm bringing all this up, all of the stuff about inputs and everything like that, Genesis 1 to 8 is the first blessing that God gives to Adam and Eve. So this is at, right after he makes them, Genesis 1 to 6, let us make man in our image and our likeness. And then Genesis 1 to 8 is the blessing. And he says, be fruitful and multiply, replenish and subdue and have have dominion. Dominion is kingship, right? Meaning God wanted you to be a king ruled by the king, right? Who's the king? Him, right? He wanted you to submit to him. And by you submitting to him, he would give you a piece of the kingdom to extend. And by you staying submitted to him, he would then give you the capability to fulfill that assignment. That's not actually what I wanted to talk about. When you think about that verse, all everything that he says, right? He says, be fruitful. And there's three pieces to this, right? Be fruitful. And then he says, and multiply. If you look through that whole verse, it breaks down into three categories. You have be, you have do, and you have have. Be fruitful, right? And then he says multiply. Multiply isn't a be. You don't be multiply. You don't have multiply. You do multiply, right? Do you pick up what I'm putting down? So you be fruitful, do multiply, do replenish, do subdue, and have dominion. Are you, see, you picking up what I'm putting down? 
All of this is about to tie back in here in just a second. Genesis 1 trade, this is a blessing. What is B, right? B is all about my being, my current state, my identity, right? Where's my identity? Is my identity actually in Christ or is it in the fact that I'm an entrepreneur? I can tell you just from my own experience for a long time, my identity was all in the fact that I was a content creator. It was all in the fact that I was a business owner. And so anytime that wasn't going well, anytime my video didn't get a bunch of views, that made me depressed. That would piss me off. I couldn't be the man of God I was supposed to be around other people. I would speak harshly to other people because really I was mad at myself but that was just a mess up in identity, right? Your state of being is who you represent yourself with. What it actually is identity. Identity is what you latch onto, right? If I identify with something, right? It's what you latch onto. It's what you claim to be you. And so everything about our being needs to be more Christ-like, right? Who are we trying to be more like as Christians? Christ, right? So it's all about being more Christ-like. Once you have this, everything about being is about identity. Once you get into the do, everything that you are doing, we could look at this like fruits, right? As you continue to, you can just answer this question. As you continue to grow as a Christian, as I continue to grow as a Christian, should we have more and more fruits that represent the fact that Christ is changing us and that the Holy Spirit lives in us, right? The way that we speak, right? Proverbs 18, 21, the power of life and death are both in the tongue, right? Proverbs 23, 7, so a man thinketh, so is he, right? Philippians 4, 8 tells you about all the things that's, uh, to think on. Romans 12, 2 talks about renewing your mind. What's one of the most important, or the two most important commandments that Jesus actually gives to his disciples? He says to love the Lord with all your heart and love your neighbor as you love thyself, right? So love, all these different types of things. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? There's different ways. Your being is your identity in Christ. Your doing is, is emulating his way of doing, right? And it's through this being and doing process that you begin to have. Now, peep this. This is the first I was talking about in the very beginning. Matthew 6, 3, 3. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now put the AMP version of that verse up right now. And look what it says. Matthew 6, 3, 3. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of doing and being, right? doing and being, and then all these things will be added onto you. So Matthew 6, was quite literally saying that when you emulate the being of Christ, when you seek to become, you submit yourself to him, you become to more like him and you begin to do more of what he told us to do, right? You're seeking his, uh, his kingdom. You're seeking to be submitted. You're seeking to extend the kingdom of God. You seek to emulate his ways. Everything will be added onto you everything that you need, that your heart's desires. Here's the other thing too. Jesus doesn't literally give anything that you pray for, right? If I pray for a cherry red Ferrari in my driveway tomorrow, he's not going to give me one just because I asked of it in his, in his name, right? But what starts to happen is when you submit to God, he begins to put new desires in your heart for your life. And then he provides those desires. That's what all those verses are actually talking about. Matthew 6, 3, 3, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added onto you. If you seek his way of being, seek his way of doing, you will begin to have what he called you to have. Oh, oh, can I get a witness? Oh, everything in the Bible connects. That's Genesis 1, 2, 8, Matthew 6, 33. I hope you found this video helpful. Christ's focus self-improvement is what I teach. Down in the description below, I normally talk about the King's Hall, but we also have a link. I'm, a, I'm hosting a free webinar here in a couple weeks. It's basically a masterclass on how you can conquer less. So it's 100% free. All you have to do is put in your email and your phone number and name and stuff, but that's just so I can actually send you the invite when we do it that day. It's on Sunday, November 24th at 4 p.m. EST, so you can sign up to that. I'll leave a link down in the description of the King's Hall. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next video.